This is the video that accompanies the file called recursion underscore example on your Canvas page. In this example, we have two different approaches to functions. We have the usual iterative function, which we have a loop to, to run through, and then we have a recursive function, which is something that we haven't seen before in this course. So uh, the recursive function is just r underscore factorial, and the uh, iterative function is i underscore factorial. Uh, we're going to be dealing, since we're doing factorials, we're going to be dealing with some numbers that are, are very large in terms of the amount of storage space. So to give us the maximum amount of storage space, we're going to use an unsigned integer. So that means that it won't have a negative portion, it's only the positive portion. So it gives you a little bit more storage space. And then we're going to go with this long, long int. That gives you the maximum storage space for an integer. So both of these would receive a variable of type int. Both of them would return a variable unsigned long, long int. So in main, uh, main's fairly short. We're just going to see out the result of calling each of the two functions. And we're going to have them calculate 10 factorial. So let's take a look at our iterative function first. So to do an iterative function, um, we would set up a temporary variable. And then we're going to check to see if the number that we called it with is greater than 1. If the number that we called it with is less than 1, so that would be a 1 factorial or a 0 factorial, um, then we would just return a 1, because 1 factorial is 1 and 0 factorial is 1. So in either case, we return a 1. Um, however, if the number is greater than 1, we go through a, a for loop. And then just each time we go through the for loop, it multiplies the number and then subtracts 1 each time we go through. So it would do, if we called it with 10, it would do 10 times 9, and then that times 8, and then that times 7, until you get down to uh, to 1. And then it returns either value. So if we run this program, you can see that we get that factorial value here. Now the uh, recursive factorial function is going to look very different. So the uh, recursive function has a check to see if n is greater than 1. If it's less than it's, or if it's equal to or less than 1, then it's going to return the 1. Uh, so you have the case of 1 factorial is 1, 0 factorial is 1, as we talked about earlier. But if n is greater than 1, then it returns n times, and then it calls itself. So this is why it's called a recursive function, is because the function is calling itself. So then when it calls, so we'll call it with n is equal to 10, it'll do 10 times, call itself then with 9, and then call itself then with 8. And so that way it's doing all of the, the function of a loop, but it's doing the function of a loop by continuing to call itself as it takes 1 off of n each time. And you can see it gives you the same result. So What's the difference? Why would we use one over the other? So the, the theory is that with the recursive function, you could do anything that you could do with an iterative or loop-based function. Uh, but that's not always true. There are certain things, a little bit outside of the scope of this class, but there are certain things where you would need a recursive function um, to be able to, to run them effectively. Um, also, what's going on here? How is the memory utilization different, right? Because obviously here we're setting up a single value for int with the iterative function, and then we're multiplying and just keeping it in that one variable. Well, what's going on here? Because we never really defined a variable. Well, the computer has an internal set of memory called a stack. And so when you're using this recursive function, it's just putting all these values on the stack and then executing them at the very end. So there's still this, the memory utilization. It's just on, on the stack. It's a different type of memory. 
uh, than if you're using the, the RAM by setting up a, a variable. Uh, but it, it's still there. Uh, and one of the, the dangers, although you'd have to get to just absurdly long number of recursions, but you could actually do a recursive function where you had so many things on the stack that you could get a stack overflow, which could, could crash your program or crash the computer. Um, but that's very unlikely if, if you're doing any sort of reasonable number of, of recursions. And you'd have to take a look at the specifics of your system to determine how many elements you could have on your, your stack before you ran into a problem. So uh, this is just kind of one of the kind of assorted topics that we're going to be talking about this week, just trying to tie up any little loose ends. Uh, and this is also kind of supported with the, that very last chapter in your book. So thanks for watching.